Alright guys, I've gotten a lot of requests to do a, a video of an at-home first aid kit. These are some of the things I've compiled of a kit that I would recommend for you guys. So let's go ahead and open the box and get started. If you haven't seen my other video of the review of this Pelican case, I encourage you to do so. You might find it interesting on some of the, the neat features of this case. So we'll start here, this top tray. There are four different, there are three trays and then the bottom level and they all slide out. So let's go over this first tray here. Up top, I've got all of my tape. Um, medical tape, surgical tape, cloth, silk. Um, that's all of my assortment of tape. I've got Coban up here. This stuff is just gold. I recommend you get some for your kit. You can use it for just about anything. Ace bandage, some two by two sterile gauze. And then I have an extra thing of glucometer strips. In the center compartment, I've got a lot of things in here. I've got a bite block, a digital thermometer, an old school thermometer, the glass ones. I've got a flashlight that can be used as a pen light, and then I have a pen light, and then a pair of scissors. Next compartment over, have some um, medical grade petroleum or Vaseline. I've got alcohol preps in both of these spots here. I have some butterfly bandages and some really tiny band-aids in here. And then in these two here, I just got an assortment of normal size band-aids. The next drawer down, I got some more bandaging stuff. So over here, a lot more alcohol preps. It's so good to have enough things to clean wounds. And if you're taking blood sugars, as we'll get to in a minute, um, you, you have plenty of those also. Some non-sterile, like just cotton swabs, non-sterile gauze, Again, some more non-sterile gauze, and then some 4x4 four four sterile gauze. In the center compartment here, I've got a flashlight, again, that could be used as a pen light, and then just some pens if you need to take notes, or write down vital signs, that kind of stuff. Over here is, is some of my diagnostic stuff. I've got a Lippmann stethoscope and a blood pressure cuff. That's it for the second tray. Okay, the third drawer here, I've got some more bandaging things. Just some rolled gauze. Um, you might know it by Kling. That's just another a brand name. This is an off-brand. And uh, this stuff is great for wrapping wounds if you apply gauze and then apply this. It helps to secure that dressing. Um, I've also got different assortment of uh, Tegaderm. I don't know if you can see that very well. Uh, I generally use this stuff for like IVs. Um, but it also can be used for wound care. But I have uh, an assortment of these, the smaller ones, and then a couple different from a different brand, some bioclusives, and then some larger ones here. This stuff works great for wounds, lacerations, stuff like that. It can be used as an occlusive dressing. Um, a couple months ago, I, cut, I had a cut on my belly. After it got it to stop bleeding, I applied the Tegaderm. That's how I dressed this wound from uh, after that to keep it clean and dry. This stuff is just fantastic and you can get it on eBay, Amazon for a relatively uh, a decent price. The next drawer here is some of the over-the-counter stuff. This I had in another first aid kit. I didn't want to put the bottles in there. They just took up too much room so I put them in little Ziploc baggies. This is ibuprofen. Here I have some low-dose aspirin. And then from another kit that I had just prepackaged stuff, Tylenol, Motrin, an anti-diarrheal, and an anti-itch cream. Over here is the rest of my over-the-counter stuff. I have an assortment of pain relievers just to have an option and because they were fairly cheap to buy. So here I've got some uh, extra strength acetaminophen, I've got some low-dose chewable aspirin, and then some extra strength headaches relief. Uh, this is like uh, your generic for Excedrin. This is acetaminophen, aspirin, and caffeine. Here I've got some antacid tablets and then ibuprofen. For low blood sugar um, emergencies, I've got like a, a liquid drink. It's a, a glucose shot, orange flavor, and then I have some tablets. And then just your generic for Benadryl. Okay, so now I'd like to show you what's down here in the bottom drawer. I'm going to push this back so it's going to be a little bit out of view and I'll slowly pull things out. And then we're just going to put stuff here out in front. So here. Um, I got just a pocket mask. I've also got some OPAs. Now again, any of this stuff that you don't feel is really necessary for your kit, then I don't recommend having it. If you don't have the specific training for like OPAs, 
it's not difficult to learn how to do these, um, but this is gonna this is gonna be one of those things. It's like um, not everyone's gonna carry these, so can I really be covered under the Good Samaritan law? Well, again, that's gonna be up to you to make a decision for yourself. But I do have them in my kit, and I consider it like my basic my basic first aid kit. So again, some OPAs. I do have a, a lot of flashlights in this kit. I'm a flashlight kind of guy, uh, but this is a, just a larger, brighter flashlight. Some more bandaging supplies. I have tons of uh, four by four sterile gauzes. And then I have like uh, abdominal pads or surgical pads. This stuff is non-adherent, non so you can apply it to a wound and it won't um, stick to the wound. That's the idea, is that it hopefully won't stick to the wound. So specific to like uh, abdominal lacerations where you might have like intestines sticking out, or uh, we call that an evisceration, uh, this would be the kind of thing you'd want to apply there so that it wouldn't stick to, the, to that wound. And that way you could pack other gauze around this on top of it and then, you know, bandage it up. So I have, a tons, I have tons of these. Um, if you buy it at the drugstore or at like Walmart, it might not say ABD pad like this one does. Uh, I don't know if you can see that from here or abdominal pad. It might just say surgical surgical dressing. It's the exact same thing. It's a non-adherent uh, surgical dressing. I have some like athletic tape almost that to use to uh, secure bandaging if need be. I have some emesis bags. I've got some hand sanitizer, a notepad if you got to take notes, write down vitals, a pair of uh, trauma shears, and an ice pack. Now this uh, is a pulse oximeter. I picked this up from Walmart. It was like $35. I know you can get them uh, for about that price on eBay or Amazon. You might even be able to get one for about $20. I can't speak to the quality of this, but for what this is for, just my at-home kit, I'm not running 911 calls on this, so it doesn't need to be really fancy. If you want to see a separate review of some of my diagnostic tools, I'd be happy to do that. But again, I have a pulse ox in this kit. Next thing is a glucometer. So uh, this allows you to check for your blood sugar. Got lancets in here. I have alcohol preps and band-aids, and then glucometer strips, and then uh, this device helps you to administer the, the poke in order to get the sugar. And then you can never have too many gloves. Um, I didn't want to try to fit a box of gloves in here, so I just grabbed a bag and stuffed a ton of, of gloves in here. So this is really, really important. Uh, back here I have an OB kit. Now I keep this in here just in case because my wife is pregnant. Now in here uh, there's a bulb syringe. Um, there's some, um, there's actually, I believe, a scalpel in here to cut an umbilical cord, and there are some clamps to clamp off the cord, and then just some like chucks pads and things like that. It's a very, very basic kit. There's also some uh, sterile gloves in here. And then, I believe it's the last thing I got in here, is a BVM. So in here, I've got oxygen tubing just in case. I don't have oxygen here at the house, um, but if I use this, and obviously 911 is going to be called and they have oxygen, right? So they can, we can plug this directly into oxygen. Uh, there's an adult mask in here. I don't carry any pediatric masks, but I am going to get some. I have a couple, I have two, uh, two children of my own, so it's a good thing to have. So if you have kids, I recommend having pediatric versions just in case. So that's basically it for my kit. Again, like I said, this is what I consider like my basic kit. This is what I would recommend for you guys to have. If you have any questions with regards to the things that I talked about in this video, I'm happy to, uh, you're, you're welcome to send me messages. My children are now crying, so I gotta make this really short and sweet. Um, I appreciate you watching my video. Please subscribe if you don't, haven't already. Give me a, a thumbs up if you like this video. Like I said, I'll have another video up to show my more advanced equipment. And if you haven't seen my video on my review of this specific case that I've chosen for my medical kit, I encourage you to watch that also. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.